Yeah. And as you can see, she, this it's is a sister. this one too, right? Yeah, the neck, you see? Not she's just the neck, playing. also the tips of the wings. You see how they're all tattered? Yeah. Just like his? So yeah. he's barbering her. Welcome to my channel! Guys, today is a heavy day because I have the Conyers here and as you can see, I'm driving, I'm focusing on the street. So I'm not looking towards you, I'm focusing on the street. If you are new here, welcome to my channel! And please hit the subscribe button, smash the bell and give us a like. Check out Angelic Parrots, my second channel as well and go subscribe! As you can see, I'm driving right now. Um, and I have sunshine and star with me right here. These are my two golden beautiful conures I got like two months ago. So they are still babies. They are 10 months old. Sunshine is a um, female and star is the male. They were both clip when I got them and they were both flightless. What happened was I got them for my backyard breeder and I will never do that ever again. I will never buy birds from a backyard breeder who is not a reputable breeder. I was really excited just to see and have golden conures just because they are so rare and it's so hard to find them and when I saw the ad I was like oh my gosh let's call it golden conures in, in California let's go see them. And I just wanted to take them home. Buying from a backyard breeder there's no warranty there's no guarantee and anything can happen like what happened with precious i don't know if she had pre-existent conditions and why she died within a month in my house i really don't know um but it's really devastating now if i would have bought precious from a pet store um she might be in a better state and might she might not have some bacterial infection and yeast so she might be still alive so here's the thing those two are still babies, they're only 10 months old. I imp them so that they can fly because Star, the boy here, this is Star, it's the boy, he has feather destructive behavior and even his good feathers he chewed off. And I had to come to the rescue and just um, be creative and just imp him and I did and he was happy. Then he broke his beak, the tip of his beak went broken and he's so sensitive, he had so much pain and I didn't know how much pain and how much pain he was but I caught it right in time and um, he started plucking. So this is why I'm heading right now to the vet with him. So as you can see, like he has a lot of little white spatches all over. So his um he's plucking off his beautiful yellow coat. Luckily there's still no skin to be seen, so he's not like bare chested, like 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 featherless, but it's really really important to catch plucking behavior early on so it can be prevented just like the flying he was chewing off his feathers so he wasn't plucking but he was chewing off he had he was chewing off his feather so that is destructive feather behavior and now he has it again um i hope he stopped but i noticed like his yellow coat get less and less like his yellow feathers uh via sunshine she has this beautiful like yellow coat and her feathers doesn't look so destructive like his does so i'm heading now with them to the vet we have a five o'clock appointment <laughs> la traffic is bad really really bad took us 30 minutes just to get out of la and now we're just heading on the freeway to that vet something about vets i have a love-hate relationship with vets so i don't hate vets but i hate incompetent vets vets who don't know what they're doing and then they kind of like pretend they know what they're doing um, on your cost or they're like psychopath and I don't know but there are some good vets out there I met two good vets that I really like but most vets that I met they are just like incompetent like the last vet who um, basically gave the wrong medication and killed precious um, so I don't know if I can film at this vet. This vet is a bird hospital. They're really knowledgeable. I like the doctor. Um, 
why didn't I bring precious to him? Because he is 90 minutes away from us. That's a long drive. Um, the other vet was in South Pass, South Pasadena, which was just like a 15 minute drive. And I don't want to put a sick bird in a, in a cage and be three or four hours on the road with them. Uh, I just didn't want to stress precious. So I, I didn't want to drive like 90 minutes um, one way, like back and forth three hours plus traffic to see the vet. And then, um, you know, I just thought that other vet could turn precious around um, with good mats, but apparently she didn't do it. So for me, this was a very huge blow and a huge loss. I'm just gonna take now some preventive care and just make sure that these two are good because they are very, very rare, very, very expensive, very, very beautiful. I really don't wanna lose them. I want. I, I really don't want anything happen to them. I love them so much. So I'm just gonna like head over now to the good vet that I like. And he has proven me that he is competent with the, with the beak, with Angel. Um, he did sedate an angel and did, gave him the right care. So I, I, I trust him to some degree. The only thing what I don't like at this vet where I'm heading now is that they take your bird and you have to wait in the lobby and you can't be with them in an examination room and then they go examine your bird on their own in the back door and you can't be in the presence of of your of the owner they are like you know i have to trust this vet with my bird when he goes in the other room so i have to wait outside while he is alone with my pet in the other room i don't know why bird doctors do that but i don't like that practice i want to be present during the exam you know just because i want to calm my birds down but anyway, that's the only like negative thing that I don't like. And they used not to do that, but then since COVID, they start doing that, which is really, really annoying. But then I understand it. But now they have this whole policy like in place and they haven't, haven't changed it yet. And now this COVID policy became a regular policy. So yeah, now you can't be with them in the examination room. They take your pet from your hand in the lobby, head back in the back door, and then do it all on their own and then they come out and give you the results and the treatment plan okie dokie i'm gonna tune in once we get there and i don't know how they are with filming i have to ask if they're okay with filming. okay guys so after 90 minutes we just got to the vet let's walk in and show them the con here. i hope they're okay with filming i'll have to ask them <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're excited Big dog. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm here for Star. Okay. Oh, hi. These are my golden conyers. Alrighty. They are very well behaved. That's good. Oh, they have. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh never mind. They have oh, I didn't realize. Flying in your Oh. <laughs> yeah, they are on the in the harnesses because they're fully flighted. They're so cute. Yeah, they are very rare, almost extinct golden conures. Oh my god. Are you guys okay with filming? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Okay. So they are sibling. This is a brother and sister. Aww. Oh, do you think it will be okay for me to be with them in an examination room? It's up to Dr. Schufer. It's unusual for us to do the exam out here, but you can talk to Dr. Schufer and he can tell you if he's comfortable with that. Usually we take up to the back because it's a smaller area, less distractions, it's right. like this. It's really up to him. When I first came here, like, you didn't have that policy. We were, like, together in the exam room. and You can talk to him. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know what he's going to say, but usually we take them to the back, but it's up to him. Right. Actually, actually up to him. Okay. okay. I'll ask him. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> That big doggy. That's a huge German Shepherd. <laughs> you probably pick up they sent. 
So by learning, by you watching it, you're going to get in here. Oh, it's a big doggy, right? Big little wolf. <laughs> you know? um, this is the container for the fecal, so it has a little poop in there. You can do something here. This is the estimate that Dr. Boyd has made because I have that crowd. Hi. Okay. He's so gentle. He's so gentle. Later. You said he's the male, right? Yeah, he's the male. She's yep. about two months. Um, the pair are in the same place. He doesn't love their feathers, but he's just looking at his feathers. Oh, yeah. They are both on years. I just got them like two months ago. Uh -huh. The breeder clipped their wings okay. and the tail feather. She just had three left. He had zero. And he started plucking off his good feathers, chewing off. I so I that. so I inked the new feathers, Amazon feathers and Hyacinth tail feathers. Now they are both lighted, but he still continued plucking. Yeah. And as you can see, she, this is a plucking this one too, right? Yeah, the neck, you see? Not she's, just she's the neck, also the tips of the wings. You see how they're all tattered? Yeah. Just like his? So yeah. he's barbering her. Yeah. All right. So the well, first thing to do is separate them, but keep the cages next to each other. So okay. they can see each other, but he can't bite her. Okay. okay? That will help her try. Right? Because she's not doing it to herself. No. Right? Now you, you're pretty. He's really tame and really loving. He's a beautiful, beautiful bird. So, uh, let's see here. 436 grams. Yeah, she's, she's losing also her neck feathers because he's plucking her too out of regression. Yeah. And then I noticed intensely he broke his tip off his um, beak yeah. uh, two weeks ago yeah. um, and I tried to mm -hmm. fix it with crazy glue and it did help but I think he was in a lot of pain so I noticed his white spots like all these down feathers coming yeah. in more two weeks ago when he had this pain with his, with his beak. Well, those would be kind of unrelated. It may be that he's just kind of molting because we're coming into springtime but if you look the quality of the feathers is not great you know yeah. what are you feeding these guys they get pallets rowdy bush pallets Good. a lot of nuts um cashew macadamia um no they don't get macadamia cashews almonds a lot of almonds and walnuts okay. so a lot of fat yeah so and apples fresh maybe fresh cut back a little bit on all the, on all the nuts are you giving vitamins no. Okay, so rowdy bush is an excellent food, one of the best ones. I would just get some vitamin uh, powder, put it in the water for all the birds, just so that they're getting that supplementation. And you can start also with fresh food from the table. Do they eat? What are they eating from that? Are you any any real food? Yeah, um, scramble eggs they had today. Good. Um, apples, bread. They love blueberries. Um, they don't like strawberries. Um, okay, so we want to work on the proteins, okay? I'm okay. going to send you a, video, a uh, handout, and you've only had them two months, right? Two Has months. the male been doing this behavior since that you got Yeah, him? since I got him, he and, was already destructive. And they were already a pair? They were already a pair. Yeah. I got them together. And um, when I got him, he had no tail feather, and I asked the breeder why he wears his tail feather, and he says he, he lost it as a baby, like, um, playing. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know if the breeder clip it off because she had only three tail feathers, he had zero. Sometimes they're keeping them in a cage that's too short, you know, the, the perch is low and maybe it breaks off. Yeah. If he's already been destroying some feathers, maybe he was doing it to themsel to them both as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he seems to be a little un unhappy with this whole situation. That he got clipped, yeah. Tell me about the, um, the cage. What do you got, a big cage? I have a big cage for him, for them together. They love their cage, but um, they are in a room with th four other birds that they can room around freely. This is the, the, this is the boy, the yeah. Boy. Come here, come here. Oh, so yeah. he, they fly from one big cage to the other. They're all day outside. They just sleep in the cage at night. They have a lot of out time. I give them a lot of chew toys. Mm -hmm. 
and they can fly all over the place yeah. as they wish. I know. But I don't know if they if the uh, the heights and macaws are scaring them. Okay, so how close is everybody? Are they, are they all in the same room? Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's try and take these two out of that room if it's possible. Okay, just to get rid of that stressor. Are they very bonded to you yet? Yes. Okay, so do you hold them all the time? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes when you have a bird who is self-mutilating, it's, it's psychological, sometimes it's metabolic, sometimes it's from parasites. So when we see them going like this, and you know, you're holding them all the time, okay, you hold them, hold them, hold them, and then you leave the room, now he's going, where's mom? Mm -hmm. And he gets upset, mm -hmm. okay? And that's a common problem. So sometimes it's best to not do so much on your body contact. You could do it on a, on a wooden um, dowel, you know, let them stand on a perch, you know, on your hand, and just let them have a little more alone time. Now the same thing goes with, with them being, um, what do you call it, upset for stressors in the environment. So it could be your other birds. Yeah, we have an African gray, he goes after the African gray. Yeah. He's very right. territorial. Right. So best best bet would be to try and move them to a different room. Okay. I sent you some handouts about feather picking behavior. Okay. And what you can do is uh, work on some foraging behavior where you get these toys, you put the food in it, so he has to work a little harder to get his food. Okay. You get more diversions in the cage, things that he can play with. Right. You know, sometimes a mirror, sometimes a video of you. Like you make a video talking to him and turn that on when you leave. A, you know, like a loop. Sometimes it helps, sometimes not. But we can help the female by just separating them, okay. right? That way he can't barber her. Right. And then we can see for sure, are her feathers going to come out normally or, or not? Right. right. How, and, how long should they be separated? Like in, well, I don't at think, night in the cage, right? No, I would just separate them. Completely. You know, yeah, in the same, but cages right next to each other. Right. So it's almost as if, okay, we're in the same room, but you can't bite me. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, that could be more stressful, so you have to watch what happens. If you put them in a separate cage and he starts picking himself like crazy, well, maybe that's not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So generally when we see this kind of behavior, the first thing we want to do is get a database, get some blood work, and see what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. Two, um, you bring in a sample of his uh, poop and we, we'll check it for intestinal parasites. And then. Sometimes we put them on mood modifying drugs while we're working on behavior management, okay? Mm -hmm. So you read through those handouts and watch some, you know, go on on YouTube and look for videos on, you know, managing self-mutilating birds, feather pickers, okay? But all of these things can be very frustrating. And these are young birds, so if we work at it hard now, yeah. maybe we'll get him conditioned so that he can do it. Yeah. Right. So getting him away from the other stressors, the other birds. Are you? Do you have a boyfriend or a husband? Yeah. Does he get upset when you're when the husband comes to you? He, you know, they no. are really nice to both and, of us. And he likes the man. Like yeah. they'll go to him just he as easily. Loves okay. My so that's sometimes they're jealous. No. Right? Sometimes he might be jealous if you're managing the other one and he doesn't like it. Right. So that's this starts to become a psychological nightmare. Right. Um, so let me get you the toss here. Physically, he looks okay. His weight is okay. I think uh, I sent you the information about a list of better foods. You want to use the high protein foods from the table, right? Okay. So bean family, dark leafy greens, uh, pieces of chicken, pieces of fish, uh, the egg white and the shell for calcium. Do you give them calcium source? Um, I have, yeah, or? I have um, calcium in in a little jar that I sprinkle on the egg okay. as well. Good. On the eggs. But they're really picky eaters. Yeah, and most birds are. You just have to keep working on a wide variety. So for instance, you say he likes bread. Okay, get seven grain bread instead of white bread. Maybe you already do. But if you're going to give pasta, get whole grain pasta, right? Yeah. Things like, so we're getting not just carbohydrates, right? We don't want a, a, so much fat and so much carbohydrate. And then you want to be sure also that <clears throat> their temperature is above 72 yeah. night and day. Okay, yeah. Because their feathers aren't perfect and they don't have as much insulation as yeah. the normal bird. So if you see them puffed up in the daytime, too cold. Right. Okay.
right. The lab tests run about uh, three hundred dollars. With the exam, the total would be four hundred and nine dollars. That blood work is going to give us a basic idea. Does he have problems with protein levels, calcium levels, you know, kidneys, liver, whatnot? As long as we know that's normal, then we have a choice. One, we first try just behavior management, okay? Two, we try Haldol, which is a mood modifier, plus the behavior management. Now, the Haldol will calm him down, not knock him out. Just going to put the calming on him. And then we see how the behavior goes. You know, so we've separated them, but the cages are next to each other. We're getting some more of the um, better food into him. And then we're going through all these behavior modifications to see what we can do to minimize his stress. Right? If his blood tests tell us something else, then we'll address whatever that problem might be. But if they're normal, then we're on a psychological hunt. Historically, I would say nine out of ten birds that are doing this do better with the Haldol. With the what? Haloperidol. This is a, a mood modifying drug. Oh, okay. Okay. An anxiety, anti-anxiety medication. Calm them down a little bit. Now we're starting the training. We're changing our behavior modification. You're maybe not holding him as much, you know, doing the things with the videos, the food hunting, and we cross our fingers. You know. I so I will let him hunt for food on his on his own. Just don't put it in a bowl. Well, that's one way. Like some, so there's a few techniques, and they're in that handout. One, there are, there are toys they've made that you put the food inside. Now he has to figure out how to get it out. Mm -hmm. You don't put that as his only food source. But some, you know, like for two hours a day, that's what he has, and he gets mm -hmm. to work with it. Other one is you put in uh, walnut shells on the bottom of the cage and then put his food in there and let him go find the food. Mm -hmm. So in the wild, we don't see a lot of this behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And the theory is that they're doing so much time finding food all day, that they're not mm -hmm. freaking out about all this stuff, you know? Yeah. And who knows what his behavior, you know, what the environment was like where he came from. Maybe mm -hmm. there were stressors there. You know, this behavior is learned. They don't generally just start out of the, as a baby and start doing this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was already like barber. When I got him, like yeah. he's out of, but out of coat. But now it's even worse. It's he worse. was his 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 inside, his belly and stuff was like yeah. perfect, like like hers. And now but he's... within like two weeks, totally like. Well, clearly having the big macaws there may be a big stress for him. I don't know mm -hmm. if his other house had them, but he's been doing this from the beginning. So, you know, the idea that all birds want to be together is a real fallacy. Like you know, birds don't all hang out together in the wild. Mm -hmm. Macaws hang out with macaws, crows hang out with crows, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, that could be one of the stressors if you have other pets in the house, you know. Sometimes it's even weird noises, you know. That it's very hard to know what the triggers are, yeah. you know. And again, sometimes they're just itchy, sometimes they have parasites. Um, so we'll try and rule that out with testing. Right. Um, but, you know, most of the time it ends up being psychological. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think also it was trauma that he couldn't fly. Like when I got him, he tried to fly and he just plumbed down like a stone. And yeah. It just broke my heart. So I put him Amazon feathers, eyes and feathers, and he can fly now. Yeah. They can both fly. She she better than him. Uh huh. And I thought maybe like you know now I'm gonna try train them for free flight. Maybe that does something in the neutrons in his brain that goes click that he's happier when night he's outside flying. Hard to say. Hard to say. But any of these things could help you know yeah. I mean at some point there are veterinary behavior managers you know behaviorists like veterinarians that just do behavior management I think there's one in Pasadena if we can't get this done you can consult with them who's that I'm not sure I think I saw one uh, let me see here. but um, my suggestion would be to try the haloperidol with the behavior management because We'll, we don't want him doing any more damage. Right. Yeah. You know. I don't want him to show any skin. I mean, yes. I just caught him right in time to come over here, and I just want him to mold out nicely, not is, uh, destroying himself. Okay. So if it's if you want us to do the lab work, I can take him and get a sample. Mm -hmm. Send that to the lab, it'll be back in the morning, then we'll know if he's sick. If he's not sick, then we just have to keep moving forward with this program. Right. Just be prepared. This is this can be very frustrating. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen this variety of conure. What, what did you call them? Golden conure. Golden, beautiful birds. But 
Yeah, very not, rare, very, very hard to breed to, yeah. very hard to take care of too. Yes. Um, so the test, are you going to get a blood test or a quick yeah, test? Yeah, blood test. And Amazon is... And it will be just a little poke a needle or how? Yes, we're going to take some blood out of the vein in the neck. Okay. And uh, it shouldn't be too stressful. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that just because I want to like um, cancel out any diseases or bacterial infections. Because well, I this, have... this is going to do some things, okay? The, the problem is that when we're dealing with a, a feather picker, there are many, many tests that can be run. It can, mm -hmm. You can start spending $1,000 looking for it. Usually I'll start with just a blood panel to see what's right and wrong with him, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, oh wow, his, his protein is too low, his calcium is too low. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we address that thing and then we work on some behavior. Because they're healthy, I mean, they're, they, they're in good flesh, they're not acting sick. Mm -hmm. So like the bad infectious diseases like cytosine, beak, and feather disease, things like that, that could be deadly, they would have been dead already. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yeah. The thing is, like, when I got them, I got a lorikeet as well. And the lorikeet started throwing up, and she became sick. So I went to another vet in South Pass, and she gave me this umbrellian medication. Within three hours, she, she was okay. She could sit like this on my finger. We did testing. Three days later, the test came back with a yeast infection. She subscribed, prescribed me umbrellian, and um, it knocked her totally out and killed her within three hours after I gave her the dose. Um, she was 900, 90 grams, 90 grams, and this vet told me, who was a newbie, I should give her um, 0 0.2 milliliter for a 90 gram bird. Well, it and depends I, what the strength of the medicine was. I'm not, com I'm not familiar with the word you're using. So what? I'm brilliant. Never heard of it. Brilliant. I think I email you because I feel like it was not suitable for birds because I feel like that medication killed my bird. Well. Again, I, I haven't even heard of that drug. What did you, can you spell it? Yes, U um, M uh -huh, B R I L L I N. I'm brilliant. I'm not looking good. Yes, I'm that's the first oh, one. Oh, okay. I'm this is just an antibiotic and moxicillin for birds. Yeah, I was just heartbroken that my bird died after giving her that medication. That's well, this. again, it is possible it was that. It could also be sometimes birds just drop dead. Yeah. And we never know, you know, what's like, sometimes the birds seem okay, and then you wake up in the morning and they're dead, mm -hmm. right? Because the time between they're being normal, and then suddenly they're puffed up, and the next thing you know, they're at the bottom of the cage, and the next thing you know is dead, that could be two days, right. you know? So you're, it sounds like you're watching your birds carefully, yeah. um, but many times there's stuff going on inside that we're not aware of. I've, yeah. In fact, they probably had you sign something that says, look, Sometimes I pick up the bird, not so much with the bigger ones, but you know, you pick up a finch or a, or a canary, sometimes they just drop dead in your hands from the, the stress, mm. you know? Okay, let me take him. Okay. Come here, baby. Oh, that's right. Add a, add this is his leash. Yeah. Got him. Oh, that leash. There you go. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't come on back down. Come on, come on. There you go. Come on, you're coming with me. You got him, right? I got him. Just give me the leash. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, there he is. Was he okay? Bad. Yeah, he was good for it. Oh, he's so stressed. He's sweat. A little sweaty. Yeah. Well, a little bit of alcohol that we had to use to get the blood. Too. Let me just finish making his medications and they'll get okay. you charged out up front, okay? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, he smells like alcohol. Yeah. So the medication is kind of treating the OCD and just like with people you can't stop the, sometimes you can stop the OCD sometimes you can't my dog is on another form of OCD medication and it's for life it's been helping him because he also licks himself and causes his skin to get infections mm -hmm. so Usually if it helps, it's four-hour medication. Fine. Yeah, because it's usually caused by OCD. It's kind of like his, the way his brain works. Same thing with people. If they have OCD, it's not likely that it's going to be treated. Mm -hmm. It's just going to, you know, the medication's going to help him from wanting to hurt himself. And I have to give it him daily? Twice a day. 
twice a day, that's a lot. Um, if it helps, it's a tiny amount, but if it helps, usually I think the doctor might drop the dose down once he stops actually feather plucking mm -hmm. to once a day or maybe drop it down the amount. But for now, we're going to give it twice a day. Okay, and um, if, if, if I run out, do we, can I get a refill? Yeah, or? absolutely. Just give us a call maybe two to three days before you actually run out more mm -hmm. if you need to. Um, and then we'll, we can refill it here. So you can come pick it up. Well, I'm in Pasadena. It was 90 minutes yeah. to get here. I know. What so we can I'll also just do, do online or something. Yeah, we can do Truly, just like you did with Angel. You can do one of your local pharmacies if they mm -hmm. have it, Costco, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens. If they have it in stock, we can send a prescription to them as well. Okay, okay uh, I, that was it. I think Dr. Schufer is the best vet ever, even though I don't like vets. He's really knowledgeable about birds. I really like him. That's why I decided to do this whole blood panel with him, just because I just wanted like, to rule out any bacterial infection. But anyway, if you like this video, if you learned something new, give me a comment down below. Give us also a thumbs up, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time in a new episode of Caroline one well, pets all now i have to go home and i have to drive 90 minutes Ugh.